Shalom, Yashallah. It's brother Mapat Dot, right? That'd be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, right? And today we're going to be going into um, Revelation 19, right? Dealing with the marriage of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai coming back together, together and beam up his um his hopeful elect, right? The, uh, the one third, right? And also dealing with Yahweh Shai taking down these other nations, man, right? We're going to kind of go into some prophecy, right? And before we get into it, I want to say Kahala Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That it be all praises to the Most High God Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world uh, ignorantly called Jesus Christ, man. But we know Him as Yahweh Shai, right? Shalom to all the mighty brothers that's uh, remaining diligent in this truth, man, keeping their garments clean, man, right? Uh, constantly praying, constantly reading, man, right? Constantly keeping their minds uh, uh, on things that please the Most High God, man, right? And likewise with the mighty sisters, man, right? And let's get right into it, man. We're gonna go to we're gonna start off with Revelation 19. And verse 1, right? So, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 1, and it reads, And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, right? So, this is talking about the um, the angels in heaven, huh? right? He said, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, the spirits in heaven, right? Those that died for the Lord, right? Saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God, right? So, John the Revelator heard... Uh, the spirits, the righteous spirits in heaven glorifying the most high God, right? And it says, for true and righteous are his judgments, right? For he have judged the great whore, right? So let's deal with that. They said, for true and righteous are the most high God's judgments, man, right? And the most high God's uh, judgments are true and righteous, man. Get a quick precept, man. All right? Quick precept, going to the songs of the three holy children. Right, so they're kind of praising the Most High God and in third heaven, man. Right, they said, true and righteous are your uh, judgments, almighty Yahweh, man. Right, so let's bring this out. This is the book of Salakia. Bear with me. I want... Come on, this is what I want right here. So this is the book of the Song of the Three Holy Children in the Apocrypha, right? Chapter 1 and verse 6, and it reads, Salakia. Verse 8, and it reads... Wherefore, all that thou hast brought upon us, and everything that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. So the Most High God's judgments are true, man. Right? When he judged us, put us in slavery, right? He got us in the land of this captivity. It was all out of true judgment because our forefathers were wicked, man. Right? It's going to be the same thing when the Most High God bring down this wicked nation, America, man. It's going to be out of true judgment because they deal treacherously with the children of Israel, man. Right? So let's read uh, Revelation 19 and 2 again from the top. It says, for true and righteous are his judgments, right? For he have judged the great whore. Now, who is that great whore, man? Right? That great whore is Babylon, man. Modern day America, man. Right? Let's go into it. Still with the great whore. Let's go to Revelation 18 and verse number 10, right? And it reads, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come. So that great horror that we're reading about is, is dealing with Babylon, huh? Right? Dealing with um the modern day America, right? So Lockie, let's um oh, I'm gonna go into Revelation 17. Right? So this is the book of Revelation to the 17 and verse 5, and it reads, And upon her forehead was na a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. So when we're reading about this great horror, we're reading about Babylon. Babylon is known as the mother of harlots, man, right? The mother of the whores, man, right? And it says, and abominations of the earth, right? Let's get another precept, right? So we're just going to get a, pre a few precepts to show who that great whore is, man. Let's go into Isaiah 13, right? Um, come on, we can bring this up. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, and verse 19, and it reads, In Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when the Most High God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So the same way the Most High God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, had it burnt down with um, fire and brimstone is going to be the same thing that happened to Babylon, man. Babylon is going to become a desolation, man. America is going to become destroyed, man. Desolate, you understand? Right? Let's get one more precept. Go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 51 and verse number 8. And it reads, Jeremiah 51 and verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? 
take balm for her pain, if so she may be healed, man. Right? And Babylon is not going to be healed once it's destroyed, man. Right? So let's read on in here. Go back to Revelation 19 and 2. Right? And it reads, we're going to read it, uh, uh, 19 and 2 from the top. It says, for true and righteous are his judgments, right? So the Most High God's right of Salaki, his judgments are true and righteous, man. Right? It's no unrighteousness in the Most High God's judgments, man. Right? And it says, for he have judged the great whore, right? And that great whore is Babylon, man, right? Modern day America, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, right? And, and, uh, and America is in bed with all these nations, man, right? It corrupted the, the earth with her fornication, right? Salaki, right, Khan, let me bring out this preset real quick. This is Revelation 18 and 3, and it reads, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, Right. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Right. So all these different nations are in bed with America, man. Right. Following after uh, the ways of America, man. Right. They have some type of uh, damn business, whether it's trades with America. Right. They're all in bed with, with this nation, man. That's why when you read on in the Revelation 18, it tells you that a lot of uh, a lot of kings on this earth going to uh, kind of mourn when they see America get thrown down. man. Right. Because they're in bed with her, man. Right. And it says. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. You see that? So let's go back to Revelation 19. Right? So it says, reading on in Revelation 19 and 2, which did corrupt the earth for her fornication. Right? So America corrupted the earth for her fornication. Huh? Right? And it says, and have avenged the blood of his servants on her hand. And the Most High God is going to avenge his servants, man. Right? By destroying Babylon, man. By making this country bloody, man. By making it desolate. You understand? And now we got to go into the classic, right? Let's go into the classic and numbers. All right? Let's go into the classic and numbers, man. This is what's coming in these last days, man. Right? Yahweh Shai is not coming back to give everybody kisses, man. Right, Yahweh Shai is not coming back to have the uh, the so-called black man holding hands with the so-called white man, right? And the, and the so-called Chinese man holding hands with the so-called damn, uh, damn Arab man, man, right? That's how they. That's what they used to tell us in the Christian church, man. That uh, damn uh, 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 Edomite, effeminate Edomite, right? Coming down from the damn heavens to make everybody hug and kiss each other, man. That's not what Yahweh Shai coming to do, man. Right? That's not. That's not the doctrine of the Bible, right? So we are gonna kind of get into it. So let's bring this out in numbers. So this is the book of Numbers chapter 35 and verse 33, and it reads, So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. Right? You understand? So this is a bloody nation, man. America is a bloody nation. And the most high God said blood defileth the land, man. Right? And that's why, real quick precepts, Shalaki. Let's go on to Nahum real quick, right? The Lord said blood defileth the land. And this land was built off the blood of our forefathers, man. Right? So this is the book of Nahum, chapter 3 and verse 1, and it reads, Woe to the bloody city, right? It is all full of lies and robbery, and the prey departeth not. So uh, the Lord said, death and destruction unto the bloody city, man. It's all full of lies and robbery. This this uh, uh, nation, America, was built off of lies and robbery, man. Right? They lied to and they robbed our forefathers, man. The Gadites, man. The Native Americans, you understand? Right? And the Lord said, woe to the bloody city, man. Right? So let's go back to Numbers. 25, 35 and 33. So you should not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. And this is the law, man. Right? And it says, And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it, man. Right? So that's why it was only right that the Most High kind of uh, destroyed Babylon, man. And that's coming, man. Right? In the near future, man. Right? It's not too far off, man. Right? Through the Spirit, you can see it. You can see this place already kind of falling, right? Shalom to the mighty brother uh, Joshua. Shalom, King. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Right? So let's go back into Revelation 19. All right? Let's read on in Revelation 19. So this is the book of Revelation, chapter 19, and verse number. We're going to read two again from the top. It says, For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which is America, Babylon. Which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, right? And have avenged the blood of his servants at her hand, right? So Yahweh Shai is going to avenge us by taking down this nation, right? And it says, and again, they said, hallelujah, and smoke rose up forever and ever, man, right? Going into after the destruction of Babylon, right? And the four and twenty elders, right? The four and twenty elders will be dealing with the, uh, the, uh, the, the angels, the councils in the heavens, you understand? Right? But that would be a breakdown on its own. 
right? And it says, and the four beasts fell down and worshiped the most high God that sat on the throne. And the four beasts is dealing with the chief uh, archangels, right? Saying amen and hallelujah, right? Verse five, and a voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God, all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great, right? And it says, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, right? So you heard the voice of a great multitude dealing with the angels, and you heard the voice of many waters. And we all know who got the word, the voice like many waters. That's dealing with Yahweh Shai, you understand? So it says, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunder, and saying, hallelujah, for Yahweh, right? Omnipotent, Salaki, omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice. And give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. So the marriage of Yahweh Shai has come, huh? Right? We know pursuing the uh, First Peter chapter one, and I believe is. Uh, let me let me go into it, right? Because I don't want to butcher the precepts, right? Just to just in case, just for edification's sake, right? To show who that Lamb is, right? Go to, I mean, it's like it's Second Peter, chapter one and verse. I believe it's nineteen. It's like is it First Peter one and nineteen? Lock here. Bear with me. Let me find this precept. Con, this is what I want right here. First Peter 1 and 19. But with the precious blood of Hamashiach as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Right? So we understand that that lamb is Jehovah Shai. Right? Just for edification's sake. I know all of us should understand this. Right? We're going to bring out the precepts. Kind of uh, prove it. Right? So this is the book of St. John chapter 1 and verse 29. It reads... The next day, John see if Yahweh Shai cometh unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of the Most High God. Right? So Yahweh Shai is considered the Lamb of the Most High. Right? And it says, Was taken away the sin of the real. Right? So when we're reading about this Lamb in Revelation 19, right? We understand through the precepts that it's dealing with Yahweh Shai. Right? So it says, re reading back on in Revelation 19 and 7, For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. Right? So the marriage of the Lamb is come, huh? What is that talking about? Now let's go into the precepts, right? Right? Because we're the, um, Salakia. Because we're the, uh, the wife of Yahweh Shai, huh? Right? The, the Lord has likened the daughters of Zion to the uh, comely and delicate woman, huh? We're referred to as women throughout the scriptures, huh? Right? Us being Israel will be the wives of Yahweh Shai, huh? Right? So let's go into it. Get a quick precept. Let's go into Syrac 7. Right? Salakia. Let me see what I wrote down. Come. It's the book of Syrac, chapter 7, and verse 25, and it reads, Marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. So when you're giving your daughter unto a man in marriage, man, that's a weighty matter, man. Right? That's a lot to deal with. Right? And it says, But give her to a man of understanding. Right? And that, and we're uh, the daughters of Zion, man. Right? And we're being given to the the man of, the chief man of understanding, man. We're, be, we're being given unto Yahweh Shai in marriage. You understand? Right? So the Lord said, give your daughter unto a man of understanding, right? It says, but give her to a man of understanding, man. Right? And we're, be we're being given unto Yahweh Shai in this marriage, man. Right? When Yahweh Shai come back, it's being likened unto a marriage, man. Right? Let's get another precept in that. Go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah 54. Right? So this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 54 and verse 5, and it reads... For thy maker is thine husband, right? So the Lord is our husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the power of the whole earth, shall he be called, right? So we understand that the, the uh, Lord is our husband, man, huh? right? And that's why Paul told us he's going to present us as a chaste version until Hamashiach, man. Huh? And Shalom, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Barakatah, Shalom, Gadget, right? So let's go into 1 Corinthians, right? That's why the Lord, uh, Paul told us, that the Lord is going to give us, we got to be presented as chaste versions unto Hamashiach, right? So this is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2, and it reads, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, right? And that one husband is Yahweh Shai, that I may present you as a chaste version to Hamashiach. Does that mean that, that um, if you have uh, sex, right, that you're not going to make it, right? That's not what the Lord dealing with. When, a, when uh, Paul's telling you he's going to present you as a chaste version, that means as a man that's uh, following Yahweh Shai in pureness of heart, huh? right, after your whole heart. You're not uh, dealing with this doctrine, dealing with that doctrine, and dealing with that doctrine, right? You're not dealing with all these different doctrines, man. You, you are fully following Yahweh Shai, man, right? Let's get another precept on that. 
right? Let's go into Leviticus. And Yahweh Shai will be the priest after the order of Melchizedek, man. Shalom, Yeshada Adhu, Shalom, king, right? Right? So this is this is the law pertaining to priests. And we know that Yahweh Shai is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, man. Right? So this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 7, right? They shall not take a wife that is a whore, right? So we can't be a whore dealing with in the bed with this doctrine, right? With this doctrine, that doctrine, and this doctrine, man. We got to follow uh, Yahweh Shai with fullness of our uh, of our heart, man, right? And the pureness of heart, right? Because Yahweh Shai can't take a wife that is a whore, man, right? And it says, or profane, neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto his God, right? So that's even in the law. That's why we have to be presented, Salaki, presented as chaste version unto Yahweh Shai, man. Right? Because Yahweh Shai can't deal with whores, man. Right? So we're going to go into a, uh, another precept just to show how the returning of Yahweh Shai is likened unto a marriage, man. Right? So this is the book of Ma Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 1, and it reads, And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Again, by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. Right. And this, in this parable, the king will be dealing with the most high God, Yahweh. And, and the son, obviously, is Yahweh Shai. Man. Right. So the, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king. Right. The most high God who made a marriage for his son. Man. Right. And that son will be Yahweh Shai. Right. Shalom to the mighty brother. H. Uh, Gabar. Kind of all praises to the most high. man. Right. So we understand that this marriage that we're reading about Revelation 19. It's, it's just parabolic, right? And we will be the wife that's being presented unto Yahweh Shah. Right? So let's go back into Revelation 19 and read. We're going to read verse 7 again. It says, let us, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come. And his wife have made herself ready. Hey, we got to make ourselves ready in that day when Yahweh Shah return, huh? Right? Um, let's go into this real quick, right? Let's go into Matthew 25. Right. Let me see if I can find this precept. Salakia. Come, let me I'm gonna just read verse one. Matthew twenty five and verse one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their limbs and went forth to meet their bridegrooms. You understand? The kingdom is of uh, heaven is likened unto uh, ten virgins being ready to meet their bridegrooms, man. Right? So it's it's throughout the Bible, man. You see that we're uh considered the, the wives of Yahweh Shai, man. Right, and we're we're waiting for Yahweh Shai to come for the uh for the marriage, man. Right, that's why we want our uh we're gonna read on, right? I'm kind of I'm kind of almost jumped the gun, right? So let's read on the uh, Revelation 19. Let's go to verse eight, and it says, "And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, man. Right, so you got to be arrayed in fine linen." clean and white when the Lord is returning, huh? right? Because that fine linen represents the righteousness of the saints, man, huh? right? Let's kind of go through the precepts, right? So we're going we gonna to bring it out. Let's go to the classic Ecclesiastes 9, right? So this is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 8, and it reads, let thy garment be always white. And that's why we want our garment to be always white. We don't want the Lord to come and we kind of get caught with our pants pulled down, man. We kind of got blots all over our garments, man. You got damn steak sauce on your garment, man. Right? You got blood on your garment. Right? You want your garment to be always white. Right? Because that, that white represents your righteousness. Right? And it says, let thy garments be always white and let thy head lack no ointment. Right? So I just wanted to get the point from that, that we got to let our garments be always white, man. Right? And Shalom to the mighty brother Mattathias. Shalom, king. Right? So let's go on to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 35. Let's see what um, our forefather Jacob told us from the beginning, man. Right? So this uh, Genesis 35 and 2, and it reads, Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments, man. And that's kind of going to, into uh, dealing with what we were just uh, reading a few verses before, man. Right? That's how you present yourself as a uh, as a version to Hamashiach. Putting away all the strange gods, all the strange doctrines, all the strange uh, ideologies, man. Right, and fully, fully committing yourself into your uh, your your husband, man. Right, your Howard Shai. That's how you present yourself as a chaste version, man. That's how you keep your garments white. Right. Let's read that again. It says, "Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments, man. Take off that that damn uh dirty garment with all the blots on it, all the blood on it, all the damn sauce on it, and put on the uh." 
your clean garments, man. Right? Shalom, uh, Maureen. Shalom, uh, sister. Shalom. Right? Let's bring this out. Get one more precept dealing with the uh, garments, right? So this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 2, and I'm going to start from... We're going to get the whole thing to get the context, right? We're going to start from verse 42. I, Ezra, saw upon Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs, right? So Ezra's had a vision of the elect, man, right, on Mount Zion, man, right? And it says, and in the midst of them, there was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns, and he was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these, right? And he answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing, right? So we have to put off that mortal clothing, put off that stained raiment, put off that stained uh, garment, man, huh? right? Put off sin. That's really what it's going into, right? If you have the uh, air to air, uh, salakia, air to hair, you understand that that's dealing with sin, iniquity, all matters of folly. Put all that off, right? So he said, these be they that put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal, right? And you want to put on the immortal, man. You want to walk in righteousness. That's what it's dealing with, man. We just read that in Revelation 19. The fine linen represents the righteousness of the saints, man. Right? And it says, And have confessed the name of the Most High God. Now are they crying, Salaki, now are they crown and receive palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of God. So Ezra saw a vision of Yahweh Shai giving, uh, giving the men that kind of uh, put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal. He's he seen a vision of Yahweh Shai putting crowns on their heads, man. Right? And it says, whom they confess in the world. Then begin I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord, man. That's a, I love that chapter, man. That's a heavy account right there, right? So let's go back to Revelation 19 and read on. Right, so this is the book of Revelation, chapter 19. We're going to read verse um, 8 again, right? And it says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, right? And we went through the precepts to show what that fine linen and that white garment was dealing with, right? And it says, For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, right? And it says, reading on, He saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb, man. And you're blessed if you're called into that marriage, man, right? And it says, and he said unto me, these are the true sayings of the most high God, right? And reading on, it says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. So you had John the Revelator. He trying to uh, uh, fall at the feet of the angel and kind of worship the angel. But the uh, the angel kind of told him to get up, man. I'm your fellow servant, man. Right? He said, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the most high God for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy, right? And the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. To be able to go into the prophecies and break them down. To be able to go into the scriptures and kind of uh, break it down, man. Make it make sense, man. Right? He said this, the uh, testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And that's what we got to be doing in these last days, right? Get a couple precepts. Right, so it's the book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 1, and it reads, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High, and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient, man. Right, and we should all be occupied in the meditation of the word, right? We should all be seeking out the wisdom of all the ancient, right? And the ancient will be our forefathers that we read about, we read about in the Bible. Right, and it says, And be occupied in prophecies, man. Right, so we got to be occupied in prophecy in these last days, man. We kind of see things coming to pass. We want to be occupied in the prophecies, man. Right, you want to uh, be occupied in Revelation, be occupied in uh, Isaiah, man. Right, be occupied in Second Ezra. You understand? We got to be occupied in prophecies, man. That's that's at the Lord. Let's get another precept. Right, because the the spirit of prophecy, Salakia, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Right, so this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter fifteen and verse one, and it reads. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, right? So the Lord says, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, man, right? And that's what brother's kind of doing right now through the spirit and uh, power of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh right? 
The Lord said, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith Yahweh, man. So we got to uh, proclaim the prophecies in these last days, man. Kind of go into them, man. Right? Brothers can't be sitting in the damn, the book of uh, the book of Genesis all day, man. Brothers can't be sitting in the book of uh, Esther all day, man. Right? Brothers can't be sitting in the, uh, the book of damn Deuteronomy all day, right? Just reading about the curses all day, man. Right? We got to be occupied in prophecies, man. Right? We got to eat the whole road. Right, so read in verse 10 again, and it reads, uh, Revelation 19 and 10, Salaki, it reads, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High God, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy, man. That's the testimony of our Lord and Savior, man, the spirit of prophecy. Right, and it says, And I saw heaven open, right? And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war, man. Right? So that, that white horse is dealing with a chariot, man. Right? That's not a literal white horse, man. We're going to go into the precept. I'm going to get a quick precept, right? Right? So they, this is going into Yahweh Shai coming back on a chariot, man. Let's go into uh, 1 Maccabees 10, right? I believe it's 1 Maccabees. Let's go into Salakia, 2 Maccabees 10. And verse number 29, right? And it reads, But when the battle waxed strong, there appeared unto the enemies from heaven five comely men upon, upon horses, right? And he's dealing with the uh, the angels on, on the chariots, man, right? And it says, With bridles of gold, and two of them led the Jews, right? So they seen two angels on chariots, man, right? And it's in the Maccabees. And it says, And took Maccabeus betwixt them, and covered him on every side with their weapons, and kept him safe. But shot arrows and lightnings against the enemies, so that being confounded with blindness and full of trouble, they were killed. Huh? Right? Let me see if I can find this account dealing with Elisha. Salaki, Elijah, I believe it's uh, 2 Kings, right? Let's go into it. Bear with me. Um, Salaki, bear with me. Khan, this is the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, and I'm going to get straight to the point. I'm going to read verse 11, and it reads. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked. And behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, right? It says there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, right? These is dealing with the so-called, what the world will call today, UFOs, man, huh? right? And parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. You understand? So Elijah was kind of beamed up by the chariots into heaven, man, huh? right? And it says, and Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. The chariot of Israel, meaning the, um, the, the so-called UFOs, and the uh, horsemen thereof, meaning the angels that's operating them. You understand? Right? And it says, And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his clothes and rent them in pieces, man. So, right, when we read about this this uh, horse that Yahweh Shai is coming back on, it's dealing with chariots, man. It don't mean Yahweh Shai is coming back flying on a literal uh, white horse, man. It's dealing with the chariots, man. Right? And that, and white just represents the color of, of being pure, man. Being in your innocence, you understand? So, let's go back to Revelation 19. All right? Revelation 19 and verse number... We read 11 again. It says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, right? The chariot that Yahweh Shai is returning on. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doeth judge and make war, right? And Yahweh Shai judge and make war in righteousness, right? Right, so let's bring this out in Proverbs. Right, just a quick precept. Spirit. Right, so this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse... Salakia 20 and verse 8, right? And it reads, A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. And we understand that the eyes of the Lord uh, is dealing with the, the, uh, the angels of, of the heaven. You understand? Right? So it says, A king that sitteth in judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes, man. And that's what the Lord is going to do when he returns. Uh, when he returns with the angels, they're going to scatter away all evil, man. Right? Through destruction, man. Right? So that's the only pre... I just wanted to bring that out real quick, right? And it reads... Verse 12, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, right? And on his head were, were many crowns. What does that mean that Yahweh Shai is returning with many crowns on his, on his head, man? Does that mean Yahweh Shai is going to have a, a bunch of many crowns, one crown right here, one crown right here, right? That's not what that's going into, man. Right, let's read it again. It says, and on his head were many crowns, man. Right, let's, let's bring up the, uh, a precept dealing with that, right? 
quick precept. Right, so this is the book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 15. It reads, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and his Amashiach, he shall reign forever and ever. Right, so that's what we're reading about when we see that it says, Yahweh Shai is going to have many crowns on his head. Man, that's parabolic. It's just dealing with Yahweh Shai taking over all these kingdoms. You understand? And reign, uh, reigning over the, uh, the damn earth. Huh? Right? So it says, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Amashiach. He shall reign forever and ever. Right? So that's what that's, that's, what that's dealing with. man. Right? And going back to Revelation 19. It reads, Shalakia. I'm going to read 12 again. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, right? Because he's going to take over all these different nations, man, right? And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, right? So what does that mean, man, huh? right? Does that mean that Yahweh, his name is not going to be Yahweh Shai anymore, right? And he's going to have a name that nobody know, man, huh? right? That's not what that's dealing with, man, huh? right? That's dealing with the uh, the name that he's coming in, the spirit he's coming in, the image he's coming in, you understand, right? Because when Yahweh Shai returned... He's going to come as something that we couldn't even imagine, that we couldn't even fathom in these, mor in these mortal bodies. Because right now, we only see through a glass darkly, you understand, right? Because you got a lot of doctrines out there. You got brothers saying, y'all not even calling him the right name because he's coming with a different name, huh? Right? That's not what that's going into, right? Let's quick precept, right? So this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 1, and it reads, A good name is better than precious ointment, right? So does that mean... um? You got to have a good name uh, on a literal level. Like, if your name is John, that's not good enough. Your name should have been Ezekiel, man. Right? That's carnal. That's not what the Lord dealing. That's not what the Lord dealing with, right? It says, a good name is better than precious ointment. A good name is dealing with your reputation. You understand? Having a good, re a good reputation, right? Coming in a, a good spirit is better than precious ointment, right? That's what that's going into, man. Right? Like right now, when we think about King David, he has a good name. Not because his name is David, but because of things that we read about him. You understand? Right? We understand the spirit that he was coming in, right? By reading about him and hearing about him. You understand? So it says, a good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. But the point I wanted from that is dealing with the name. Huh? When we read about Yahweh Shai having a new name that no man knows, it's just dealing with his, his reputation. You understand? His spirit. Right? Because we, we only see through a glass darkly. We don't know everything about Yahweh Shai as we ought to know, right? As we think we know, right? Let's bring this out in uh, Corinthians. Right? So this is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 9, right? And it reads, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part, right? So brothers only know in part. We only prophesy in part, man, right? We don't 100% have full understanding of Yahweh Shai, right? In the spirit that he's returning in, man. Right, we're prophesying in part, huh? Right, that's why he's coming in a name that no man know it. Right, and I'm gonna jump to verse 12. It reads, For now we see through a glass darkly, meaning we we kind of we kind of understand what's going on when we read the scriptures, but in these corruptible bodies, we don't really uh we don't really fully understand and we can't fully grasp the uh the, the, the things that's gonna come to pass, man. Huh? Right? We see through a, a glass darkly. But then face to face, right? Now I know in part. But then shall I know even also as I am known. You see that? So right now we just see through a glass darkly, man. We prophesy in part. So that's what that's dealing with when we when it says he has a name that no man knoweth, man. Because we only prophesy in part. We don't know the true spirit, the true image that Yahweh Shai is coming in, man. All right? So stop letting people tell you that. That means that we don't know the true name of the Lord, man. All right? Because let's bring this up. All right? Just to cut that real fast. Right, just to cut that that folly doctrine that brothers is calling on the false name because he's coming in a new name. Man. Right, so let's go into Matthew one and twenty one. Right, so this is the book of Matthew chapter one and verse twenty one, and it reads, "And she shall bring forth a son." Right, talking about Mary. Right, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from his from their sins. Right, so just right here we read that his name is Yahweh Shai, and then we go into Hebrews. And we read that the Lord does not change, man. He's not going to come in a new name, right? So this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 8. Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, the same yesterday, the same today, and forever. Man, Yahweh Shai is going to be the same forever. His name is not going to change, man. Right? So that's just dealing with the spirit that he's coming in, man. Right? So going back to Revelation 19 and reading verse number 12 again. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. 
and he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Right? So this doesn't sound like a uh, damn effeminate, uh, sweet, uh, so-called white man Jesus that I'm reading about right here, man. It says he's going to come back in a, in a vesture dipped in blood, man. Why is sweet Jesus that's coming back to give everybody hugs and kisses dipped in blood, man? Huh? Right? That's folly. That's why, man. Huh? Right? Let's, let's bring out the precept, right? Going to Isaiah 63, man. We're going to read about why Yahweh Shai is dipped in blood. Because they didn't teach us this in the world, man. When you were in the world, when you were in damn Christianity, man, right? You think about, you thinking Jesus coming back for us to hold hands with the so-called white men, man. You thinking Jesus coming back for all of us to be one people, man. That's what that's what they make it sound like. But we read in the prophecies that uh, Yahweh Shai is coming back to, um, to be bloody, man. Right? To slay these nations, you understand? Right? To slay the wicked Israelites, man. Right? So let's read this in Isaiah 63 and 1. Let's see why uh, John the Revelator saw Yahweh Shai with a bloody vesture on him, huh? Right? And it says, this is Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Right? So uh, Isaiah seen a vision of Yahweh Shai coming from Edom, huh? Right? And he said, and dyed garments from Basra, huh? Right? And Basra represents, ba uh, Basra would be, um, a son of, of, of Esau, you understand? But Basra also, also represents the chief capital of the land of, uh, of, of, of Edom, Salakia. Right? And the chief, the chief place and the chief, uh, the chief dwelling of the so-called white man today would be America. would be Babylon, you understand? Right? So it says, who is this that coming from Edom would die garments from Basra? Right? And that's representing Babylon. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. So Isaiah kind of wondering, like, who is this do I see in this vision, man? He's coming from Edom with dyed garments from Babylon. He kind of got a, a, a red stained all over his garment, man. Who is this that I see in my vision, right? And it says, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. So Yahweh Shai kind of spoke up and said, that, that's me that you see in that vision, man, right? I that speak in, in righteousness and mighty to save, man, right? And it says, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? So Isaiah asking Yahweh Shai now, like, why are, you, why are you red in your apparel? What's going on? Right? And it says, Salakia, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. He like me, your garment got red all over it, like you just tried it in the wine fat. What's going on? Right? And this is what Yahweh Shai said. He said, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I would tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, man. Huh? Right, so this doesn't sound like sweet Jesus, man. He said he's gonna trample the people, man. Right, and their bloods were sprinkled, uh, sprinkled all over his garment. Right, right. This sounds like our Lord and Savior, man. The Savior of the Israelites, Yahweh Shai, man. It's not that damn so-called white man, Jesus Christ, man. Right, Yahweh Shai not coming back to give the real hugs and kisses, man. Right, Yahweh Shai is not coming back to make peace, uh, with the with the nations. You understand? Right, it's gonna be peace in Jerusalem, man. Right, and it says. For I, it says, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment. Man, this is a powerful account. Yahweh Shai said, man, I'm going to stain all my raiment, slaying all these nations and even the wicked Israelites, man, that's, that's, that's still holding hand in hand with Babylon, man. They're going to be slain too, right? And Yahweh Shai said, for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come, man. right? So let's go back to Revelation 19. And that's why it reads, Revelation 19 and verse, we're going to read verse 13 again. It says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, right? And reading on, it says, and the armies which were in heaven follow him upon horses, upon white horses, right? Clothed in fine linen, white and clean, Salakia. Let's bring out a uh, quick precept. Let's go to Isaiah 26, right? Because we understand that Yahweh Shai is, uh, is returning with the host of the angels, man. Let's go to Isaiah 26. Right, so this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 26 and verse 19, and it reads, Thy dead man shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise, right? So this is speaking about the resurrection. We understand that the seventh trumpet is going to be when Yahweh Shai returns, and it's also going to be when he beams up his elect, you understand? Right, during the resurrection. It says, Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, right? So all those, even that's dead in Hamashiach, they're going to arise and sing, you understand? They're going to be beamed up, right? Ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of the herbs, 
and the earth shall cast out the dead, right? And it says, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers, right? And shut thy doors about thee, right? Dealing with the chariots. You're going to be beamed up. You're going to enter into the chambers of the Lord, right? And the, and the Lord says, shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed, right? And we're going to be in the chariots with the Lord until the indignation and the destruction of this world be overpassed, man, right? Shalom, Sister Ruth, Shalom, right? So that's dealing with the uh, the, the Lord returning with the angels, right? So let's go to Revelation 21 and verse 1, right? And it says, <coughs> Salakia, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, right? For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea, right? And that's dealing with new rulership, right? That's dealing with new rulership. That doesn't mean that a new, uh, it's going to be a new world that pop up out of nowhere, man. That's not what the Lord going into. That's dealing with a new rulership, man. Because now our people, the Israelites, is going to be in rulership. That's why John, the revelator, said, I see a new heaven and a new earth, man. Right? And it says, and reading on, it says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High God out of heaven. Right? And the Christians will tell you that you, they seen, uh, that that's going into Jesus Christ coming down. And he got literally a physical... A physical kingdom coming down with him, and he's just gonna plant the kingdom on the earth, man. Right? But that's 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 not that's not biblical doctrine, right? Because the Bible clearly tells us in the books of Salaki, in the book of Isaiah, that these other nations are gonna build up our kingdom, right? So how would Yahweh Shai just come out of the sky with a physical New Jerusalem and just drop it on the earth, and now we're in the kingdom, man? Right? That doesn't make sense, man. That's not the doctrine of the Bible. You understand? Right? So let me read that again. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And we just broke it down uh, a couple precepts ago that we're the bride that's being prepared for Yahweh Shai, right? So that's who John saw coming out of the uh, out of the heavens with the uh, with Yahweh Shai and the angels, man, right? He saw us after we were beamed up, Salakia, beamed up and coming back down. You understand? Right, that's what he meant when he said he saw New Jerusalem, man. He saw the Israelites that were saved, man, coming back down with Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. Right? Let's go on to Psalms 45. <coughs> Salakia. Just uh, to add on to that point. Let's see if I could. Um, Khan, this is the book of Psalms. Salakia, this is what I want. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, right? Let's go back to Revelation 19. Right. So this is the book of Revelation to the 19 and verse 14. Right. And the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses. Right. And we just read that these armies would be the other angels. You understand? They're going to have chariots of their own. Also, man, it's going to be a bunch of chariots that crack the sky in the last days when, when our Lord and Savior returns. Huh? Right. And it says clothed in fine linen and clothed in fine linen and white. Right. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Right. That with it. He shall smite the nations, right? So this doesn't mean that uh, Yahweh Shai is coming back down and he's going to have a sharp sword just kind of coming out of his mouth, man. right? That's why we got to go precept upon precept to get the understanding, man. We can't just read things like it's a novel, man, right? The scriptures is like a puzzle, right? So let's bring it out. Let's show what that sword is in uh, 2nd Edges 13, right? So this is the book of 2nd Edges chapter 13 and verse, I'm going to start from verse number 9, right? And it reads, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword, nor, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, right? So that's what that sword is going into, where it says it's seen a sword coming out of the mouth of Yahweh Shai, right? Let's read that again. It says, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, right? And it's dealing with Yahweh Shai being in the chariots, kind of sealing out them, uh, the damn laser beams, man. Tempest, right? Fire, you understand? Right? So that's what that's going into. Yahweh Shai won't have a physical sword coming out of his mouth, and he kind of flying around, stabbing the nations with his damn mouth, man. Right? That's folly and madness, man. That's not what this is going, that's not what that's going into. Right? And it says, out of his tongue, he cast out sparks and tempest, man. Right? So that's dealing with the chariots that he's going to be riding in, man. Right? And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight, and burned them up, every one. Right? So we're going to uh, kind of rest on that, man. Right? We're going to go back into 2nd Edges 13, though. 
Right? So let's read Revelation 19 and 15 again. And it reads, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations. Right? Right? And it says, And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. And Yahweh Shai is going to smite these other nations. Right? So this is after Yahweh Shai already destroyed Babylon, man. Huh? So called America. Right? And now he's going to smite the nations in the valley of Jehoshaphat, man. Huh? Right? Let's go into that, man. Dealing with the battle of Armageddon, man. Huh? Right? We're going to go into the precepts, right? And, um, let's see. Come on, so this is Revelation 16 and verse number... I'm going to start from 16 and get straight to the point. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon, right? So this is when these uh these different nations, you understand, is going to be gathered uh into the Valley of Jehoshaphat to have the, 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 the final battle, man. At the peak of World War III, man, the Battle of Armageddon, you understand, right? And it says... And the seventh angel poured out his vow into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Right? So this is the seventh. When you read about the seventh trumpet dealing with the seventh angel, we're talking, we're reading about uh, the return of Yahweh Shai. That's when Yahweh Shai cracks the sky. You understand? And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. Right? So this is, that's, that's dealing with the, um, the valley of Jehosh Jehoshaphat, man. Right? The Battle of Armageddon. Let's get another precept on that. Let's go into 2nd Edges 13. Right? And I'm going to read on where I kind of left off at. Right? So this 2nd Edges at the 13 and verse... I'm gonna get, matter of fact, I'm going to get straight to the point. Right? Verse 31. And one shall undertake to fight against another. One city against another. One place against another. One people against another. And one realm against another. Man, that's right? So you're going to have these other nations kind of... Uh, Fighting it out with one another, man. Right? Nation against nation, man. Right at the peak of World War III, man. You're going to have these other, these different nations uh, warring against one another, man. Right? And it says, And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before, and then shall my son be declared. Right? So at the peak of World War III, during the Battle of Armageddon in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, that's when Yahweh Shai is going to return, man. Right? Whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. So when everybody see Yahweh Shai crack the sky, you understand, that trumpet kind of sound off. They're going to stop uh, the, the war that they have with one another and uh, put all their attention on Yahweh Shai. Right? And they're going to come together and try to take down Yahweh Shai. Right? And the angels. Right? And it says, And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them. Willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. And they're going to try to take down our Lord and Savior, man. But Yahweh Shai is going to defeat him, man. Right? Shalom to the mighty brother Yahweh Shalom, king. Right? So let's go back to Revelation 19. Right? So this is the book of Revelation to the 19. And we're going to read verse 15 again. And out of his mouth go up a sharp sword. And we just read what that sword was, man. That's not dealing with a literal sword coming out of the Lord's mouth, man. We kind of just went into the precepts and kind of showed what that's going into. That with it he shall smite the nations, right? And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty God, right? Because that's when Yahweh Shai is going to uh, kill, kill these nations, you understand? Right? And also kill a bunch of wicked Israelites, man. That's what that wine press is dealing with, right? And it says, um, Salakia, let me see. Let me get a precept on that. Khan and Salakia. Come on, let's bring this out real quick. I'm going to get straight to the point. Revelation 14 and verse 20. And the, ripe, the wine press was treading without the city, and the blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horse's bridle. So there's going to be so much blood in that day that the blood is going to come unto a horse's bridle, man. Right? And it says, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Right? So that's how much blood Yahweh Shai is going to shed in that day, man. That the blood is going to come up to a horse's bridle. You understand? Right? So that's what that wine press is going into. Right? In verse 16. He hath on his vesture and on his thigh, his thigh a name written, kings of kings and lords of lords. Dealing with the spirit, he's going to be coming in that day, man. Right? That's what he's going to be, the king of kings and the lord of lords, man. Right? And it says, and I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried, he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. That ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, 
and of them that sit on them, in the flesh of all men, both free and bond, small and great, man. So everybody's going to uh, die in that wine press, man, right? Besides the uh, the one third that's kind of beamed up and saved from the destruction, you understand? Right? So let's bring, bring this out in Ezekiel. Bring this out in Ezekiel, right? Dealing with that great supper. Um, con. So this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39 and verse 17. And thou son of man, thus said Yahweh power, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come, gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you. Even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel that you may eat flesh and drink blood, right? Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink of the blood of princes of the earth and rams of lambs and of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. You see that? Right. So we're reading about the same thing. Right. So reading on in Revelation 19, let's go to verse 19. And it reads, and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together that, to make war against him that sat on the horse, right? And we just read about that in 2nd Edges 13, how all the other nations are going to stop fighting one another and look towards the uh, heavens and try to fight against uh, Yahweh Shai and the angels. You understand? We just read it. We just went through the precepts, right? Gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army, right? And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, right? And the beast represents the, uh, the NATO, right? And with him the false prophet represents the different uh, false... Uh, the damn, what's the word I'm looking for? False religions of of the so-called white man, right? Not it's not a specific man called the false prophet, man, right? Because that's what they used to tell you in the world. You got a, a specific false prophet that that needs to come before the world ends, and you got a specific man who's named the Antichrist that needs to come before the world ends, man, right? That's not what that's going into, right? And it says that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. These were cast alive into a lake of burning fire with the brimstone, right? And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, right? And the remnant were slain with the sword of Yahweh Shai. With sword proceeded out of his mouth, right? And we understand that's dealing with the laser beam, right? And the fire and the tempest, right? That's going to come from the, um, the chariots, right? And all the fowls were filled with their flesh, man, right? Hey, and that's, that's kind of it on that, man, right? Bring out a, a, a preset, right? And I'm going to kind of... Kind of close out. Let me bring this out again through the spirit, right? It's the book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 1. Huh? And it reads, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies, man. So we got to be occupied in these prophecies, man. Occupy and going into the return of Yahweh Shai. Going into and meditating on Jacob's trouble, you understand? Going into and meditating on World War III, and, right? We got to be occupied in the prophecies, man, right? I'm going to bring out uh, the classic, right? So this is the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, man. So we got to be diligently uh, serving the Lord in this thing, man, right? We can't serve the Lord with a slack hand, man, right? We got to give diligence to make our calling and our election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fail, right? And that's a heavy precept, man, right? The Lord said, well, Peter said through the Spirit of the Lord that if we do these things, we shall never fail, man. If we diligently serve the Lord, we shall never fail, man. And I know nobody wants to fail in this thing, man. And it reads, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Hamashiach, Yahawashai, man, Right? Lord willing, this was edifying to brothers and sisters that kind of tuned in and, and kind of going to watch it, man. Lord willing, it was edifying, right? I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Right? Brothers got to kind of get into it, man. Read about the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, man, our King, man. Right? He's not coming back to give everybody hugs and kisses, man. Right? He's not coming back to kind of rub your baby on the head, man. Kind of give her a kiss, man. Right? Yahweh Shai is coming back as a, as a uh, hey, man, let me bring this out, man. We're going to close out. It's a spirit. Right? So this is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 15. It reads, Thy almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of a land of destruction, man. And that's how Yahweh Shai is coming back, man. Right? That's how the almighty word is coming back, man. Right? He's coming back down from the third heavens as a mighty man of war into a land of destruction, man. Right? And with that, I'm going to say, Come Yahshala. 
Shalom, Yasha Allah. I love y'all. Shalom.